in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah praise the lord now pray one last prayer father give me an encounter tonight in the name of jesus everywhere inside outside give me an encounter tonight in the name of jesus We're here for an encounter. Give me an encounter. Give me an encounter in the name of Jesus. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. It's a powerful prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 Let it cover our lives, O oh God. Let it cover all the earth. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my prayer. King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in us. Adonai. So I pray tonight and forever. Adonai. Let your kingdom come. Remains our prayer. Let your kingdom come. Yeah. Let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign. Let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain.
Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open. Christ. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. We thank the Lord for the opportunity that he provides for us week after week to learn. Um, let me speak especially for those of us who are here. Be very careful so that we never get to points where we become too familiar with the dealings of God. You know, sometimes the Bible says knowledge can puff up. That means that when you get to a point where truly in experience, you understand the ways of God, chances are that you can plateau at a dimension in the spirit and believe that that is all there is in the pursuit and the knowledge of God. And it's not it's not a state that may be done intentionally usually the bible calls it the pride of life the pride of life is different from pride the pride of life is the self-glorification that comes in the face of obvious results if you don't have results you cannot have the pride of life you can have pride but not the pride of life and I know that God has helped us and we have to be very careful so that we are not lost in the folly of achievements. Achievements are important, but they can be very destructive. Very destructive. Hallelujah. And so it's important that our hearts continue to remain malleable and open. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to teach on something very powerful. I, I believe with all my heart, um, if we're not able to finish it tonight, we can continue um, perhaps after the miracle service. But, um, you know, we've been discussing along the lines of our convictions about God and the methodology Please, I want you to listen very carefully. There is a formula for knowing God. That means that the pathway to the knowledge of God is not one that is dependent on creativity. I've taught you and it will, I will continue to repeat it again and again. That when it has to do with your walking with God, creativity is not required what is required is obedience and alignment you are not at liberty to choose your pathway you are not at liberty to choose your formula it is not given to a man to choose how he wants to know god that privilege was never given to the saints at no time was any man given the privilege to invent his way of knowing god are we together Creativity only becomes useful when that kingly dimension, when it has to do with the revelation to creation now, to creation. That's where creativity comes as one of the doorways to manifesting dominion. But as far as our work with God and our spiritual growth is concerned, we are not given the liberty to choose the pathway. The Bible says, ask for the ancient path. And when you find it, walk in it. That means that your creativity is not required. I say this because the man, please listen. Man is like, is like a raw material. Are we together? And there is a process that God leads man through. And the object, what man should become, is already known in the heart of the Father. 
Are we together? And the Bible does not even hide it. He already tells us who and what we should be like. That means at the end of our journey, we should become like an embodiment that is personified in Jesus the Christ. Are we together now? So you pass a product from one end of the, the machine or whatever it is, and then you already have an expectation that if done well, this is what should happen. When a caterer or a chef gets to the kitchen to cook, he or she already has an idea. Are we together? Of what the meal should become. There is nobody who cooks properly and then does not have an idea and in many regards a clear picture of what the meal should become. You don't have to wait for the food to cook to know what it should be. From the start you already know. Are we together? Now, many people can be with you in the kitchen there and not exactly know what, because of the kind of combination. But at the end, you must know what you should be. When a pilot is about to fly an airplane from one place to another, the pilot, although the pilot may not see where he's going most of the time, the pilot already knows that I'm flying from Lagos to Abuja I'm flying from Lagos to Kaduna and so on and so forth it is not only God that wants to that should know what we should be even the be should have an idea of what he should become transformation is almost impossible when there is no reference you cannot become nothing so your transformation must be based on a reference. I can tell you why many believers do not grow. Because one, we are ignorant of the methodologies of growth. Number two, we do not even have an idea. We know in theory that we should be like, like telling me that I should be, I should be like, um, so 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 and so person and now i don't know that person so how can i know what if you tell me to dress promise please stand if you tell me to dress like promise right i will have to come i will have to see him and see how he dressed and then try to replicate the dressing are we together but if i have not been able to see promise i do not know him it's going to be difficult for me it's a standard that is almost impossible not because the raw materials are out of reach, but there is no reference. So the Bible says, looking up to Jesus, and he calls Jesus, not just Savior. Jesus has many names in the Bible. And one of the names, as far as our transformation is concerned, is the author and the finisher of our faith. Meaning that when you come into the faith life, the kingdom life, your gaze should continually be on Jesus. To refuse to be distracted by the vicissitudes of life and the things that can stem out of nowhere to set your gaze and focus on Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that now the Lord is that spirit, right? He says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then the Bible goes further to say now we all with unveiled face beholding him not them not it money is it fame is it are we together promotion is it the bible says don't behold it you will get it but the object of your focus is beholding him as in a mirror it says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other ever increasing glory even as by the spirit of the lord so the moment i set my gaze on jesus christ no matter what it is that happens once my gaze is fixed on him there is an assurance that eventually i will begin to look like the one that i'm gazing at and as far as i've read my bible i do not see anything in jesus that is not desirable by men. 
is it the crown upon his head is it the brightness of his glory is it the majesty that surrounds his throne the bible says if i look at it you know we want the things that are on in and around jesus and we want to get them looking away from him focusing on those things the throne room is a place of wealth and abundance the throne room is a place of majesty and splendor the throne room is a place of excellence the throne room is a place of power and so when i fix my eyes on jesus sooner or later you find out that you are looking at a man but then you are becoming him but not just him generically you are becoming every dimension of him you are seeing are we together so i fix my eyes on jesus and suddenly something begins to happen to my finances i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my influence i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my understanding i fix my eyes on jesus something begins to happen to my authority he says looking up to jesus and if you do not have an idea of who that jesus is then it is dangerous because there are many things if no one ever tried to be jesus or god in the bible it would be easy but now there are many gods in the bible and there are many saviors supposedly that means if you don't know the one you are looking for someone else can substitute him and say i am god and you will innocently look up to that person or that thing believing you are looking at god and you will be changed into that thing it's only that at the end you will look at your life and say this was not how i started there will be no representation of beauty and glory in your life are we together so pray a prayer before i start open my eyes oh lord grant me the miracle of open eyes open my eyes to see a man cannot see until your eyes are open hallelujah listen let me tell you this before we get to the word the more i know god and the more i study scripture the more i know what our problem is as men let me tell you one of the major problems of men we think revelation is something you get are we together we know that our lives are dependent on the light we have there is no place in scripture where a man was instructed to pursue light everywhere in scripture is light coming listen very carefully for as long as you believe you have the power to get light then the light of god will never come these truths that we teach they are very exact it's a body of spiritual knowledge that is given to you don't forget this scripture a man can receive nothing a man can receive nothing receive nothing until it is given what god does not send to you from heaven can never enter your hand so th there's no point seeking around your assignment when the bible says seek and you will find the idea is not to go around the word seek there in its root word is not to search as it were is really the word position yourself it's more of a posture than it is of a searching there are things you can never see by studies no this is beyond the realm of education this is beyond the realm of intellect although your intellect will participate in communicating it but it does not come from the realm of intellect there is a wisdom that is sophia human wisdom is a product of age and your exposure to science 
but there is a wisdom that comes from above are we together now so I, I i need you to understand that these spiritual things are not necessarily things that you learn true revelation comes you are made a partaker you fellowship with that mystery it's a fellowship you are called into it that's the reason why when you communicate that wisdom the dimension of this it's ancient is older than you predates you predates your christian experience and even predates your level of spiritual exposure it tells you that wisdom is coming from a realm that is older higher and more superior than you so really the prayer is not to to search around the prayer is to position yourself so that that light can come to you but when that light comes to you and you receive it according to the authority of scripture the bible says you must arise and shine if that light comes you can know when the light has come by the possibilities that are now captured in your life i will continue to teach us that our lives not necessarily immediately but our lives with time and that time is not forever and that time is not your lifetime your lifetime is too long with time because we operate by times and seasons it becomes unfair to expect everything to happen in your life in one day no you are not living in the realm of eternity you are living in the realm of time so many things in your life are time dependent they are time dependent for three reasons one there is a spiritual law called the law of process and so there are things in life that the speed has already been regulated by god your being serious with god or not cannot increase the speed it will happen within that time then there there is time that is regulated that is based on your insight and obedience so you can slow down and increase that pace of achievement based on the insight that comes to you and the application of that truth and then of course time can be regulated based on the hindrances the spiritual hindrances are we together yes and the spiritual hindrances are only three number one covenants number two disobedience number three um what's the third one demonic attack the devil can hinder you i desire to come to you once and again but satan hindered us so satan can hinder men so i don't expect that pastor femi in one day on hearing the truth of scripture no matter how accurate i do not expect you to enter into the experiential fullness of everything overnight in fact in fact if that happens to you is proof that something went wrong and jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men are we together ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me you would have just said all over the earth but he broke it into dimensions jerusalem samaria judea and to the utmost part of the earth so it's very very important but let me submit to you ask any man that has been granted access to the spirit of revelation if they are honest enough with you they will tell you it did not come from the abundance of the study of scripture the study of scripture is important it helps to prime your spirit man like you prime a pump but the real revelation comes from God to you it comes as light and then depends on the quality of your mental enlightenment to break it down into the truths that that light communicates 
God does not speak English. God does not speak Greek. He doesn't speak French. He doesn't speak Spanish or Hausa or English. He speaks light. His language is light. Are we together? Yes. And the only faculty of your tripartite being that can receive light is your spirit man. So when that light comes upon your spirit man, you have it. But then it is not useful to you being locked up in the realm of the spirit and interfacing your spirit and your body where it is needed. Remember, the earth realm is where all these spiritual realities are required. They are not just required to remain in the realm of the spirit. Otherwise, there will be no need for transformation. Once that light comes upon you, that's enough. But you need it translated here and now. Are we together? And that technology of transfer is what we must learn. The eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you may know. So you begin to have understanding. And when you have understanding, I've taught you that this body does not have power on its own. Are we together? When your spirit leaves your body, you are called dead. Dead means that your body is inactive. So the body is a slave somewhat. Or better still, the body is an executor. The assignment of the body is to execute the conclusions of your spirit, your soul. Whatever your body decides, I mean whatever your spirit man decides, or whatever is decided in the solical realm, your body is now authorized to execute it. So if my body continues to go to region and continues to capture experiences that are destructive to the health of my life and my destiny, the problem is not the body. The problem is that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. And if you are a believer, then the problem is not from your spirit man. The problem is from the solical realm. That's where the battle is now. Why? Because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. Are, are you getting this? Listen, what I'm showing you now, are, these are the fundamentals of Christianity. It's important that you know them. It's amazing how many believers get born again and they're absolutely clueless about the faith life. And we preachers have a lot of repentance to do in terms of the miscommunication of truths because we do not guide believers methodically we just randomly bring truths anyhow and so they continue to receive truths that are not progressive there is no synergy in their growth they cannot connect the usefulness of a revelation to another experience so they have many experiences but they are disjointed i can't see the relevance of this topic to this one there should be a sequence are we together yes there should be a sequence to your spiritual growth that means that come my dear that means i should be able to teach you something now and then you come you should hold her hands you should be able to connect what i taught you are we together like a ladder it should lead you to the next you stand here level of life and then i should connect you this is how growth happens if your truths are not sequential you will get a lot of spiritual information but not coordinated enough to reveal christ in your life this is the tragedy of many believers so when i switch on your laptop i see many sermons i see many topics i see many um exegesis of scripture theological dissertations that have come from different people different schools of ministry and so on and so forth and on the abundance of those information you can pride yourself to believe you are growing but the problem is that truths were supplied but not sequentially arranged are we together so somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prosperity you don't know where it fits in the graph somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about character 
somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about service in the house of god are we together somewhere come in your spiritual life they taught you about demonology deliverance warfare somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about prayer are, 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 you, are you following me now somewhere in your spiritual life they taught you about whatever it is now these informations are all useful but you find out that you have them yet your life does not testify that you have light the problem is not the scarceness of light the problem is the sequential arrangement of truth notice how jesus began to teach the people jesus officially started his mentorship with what we call the beatitudes it was an exe exegesis on the kingdom life gradually he began to lead them then he started getting deeper he got to a point that was so deep people ran away and he said will you also go he said to whom shall we go you alone have the words of life by the time we get to john 14 15 he's now introducing the holy spirit never did he introduce the holy spirit before that time then he got to a point where jesus himself was almost frustrated he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot capacity capacity you don't have the capacity to bear them he says how be it no cause for concern when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you he didn't say he will give you truth many people want to get truth they don't want to be guided in truth listen carefully you can get truth but when you are guided you are shown the sequential arrangement of truth in a way and manner that can stamp the gates of hell this is where the problem is there is almost nothing you will tell an average believer that he's hearing for the first time it may just be in a more with more theological accuracy or with more intellectual prowess but the central thought is almost always known yet our results our lives are not looking for new things our lives are looking for a rearrangement a sequential arrangement something you knew before prosperity is why prosperity does not bless you are you getting what i'm saying now something that you should not hear there there are messages that you were supposed to hear first before hearing about success and since you did not hear it what is now light has turned to a sword that is killing you It is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets are we together an evangelist and pastors and teachers are we together now and then the bible says for the equipping the perfecting the word perfecting there is the maturing of the saints when you give birth to a baby a number of us here have children at the back we have our lovely children they're enjoying the comfort of the first days and months of their lives now only a wicked mother will give birth to a child and carry stock fish and put it in the mouth of that child or carry um, cow tail are we together it doesn't mean cow tail is destructive to someone else that's an answered prayer at a level you will sit down and pray and god will supply but now cow tail will be required in that baby's life but somewhere but now when you give the child cow tail you give the child every kind of thing you will soon find out that your child is dead what killed the child food food did you ever learn that food can kill it's not only poison that kills it is not only wrong things that kill good things not arranged sequentially can kill the prosperity of fools shall destroy them it is not the prosperity is that that guy was a fool he needed to be wise first so you the word of god that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom and what is wisdom the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning
beginning of wisdom. So you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of God. You watch what he would do to his mother or father when the money comes. What I'm sharing is powerful. This is not even my message. I, I don't know how I got here, but this is powerful. Sometimes the Lord just distracts us like that to speak to people. It can be a prophetic word for someone that look, 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 look. Your journey of ever learning, your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will full frustrate you. Because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge. But the little he has was so sequentially arranged. His life will show that he's growing properly. So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. He said, I know this is the record. Look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits. The person who is talking now does not have transport back home. Now, I'm, I'm not talking of initial. I don't ever blame any Christian when it does not have results from the instance. It is okay and it is normal. But when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your life refuses to bear that witness, then it's proof that something is wrong. And we can easily diagnose the problem. Number one will be to check in the area of ignorance. If we find out that ignorance is not the problem, then number two will check the quality of the information. Be careful lest what you call light be darkness. So you can call darkness light. Isaiah chapter 9, when you read, I think verse 2 or thereabout, I can't remember. It says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Until the great light came, they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness. It says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death, upon them a light has come. We can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture etc and believe that based on the abundance of this information we have light there is the true light that lighted every man there are other lights that cannot light any man they can light other things but they can't light men animals have a principle that they work with is that true most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men the principle the animals work with is light but that light cannot light any man in their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality remember all power belongs to god so the principle there is not an invention of science it is God's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well. But because we are the highest of God's creation, many of those truths, they are truths, but not applicable to us. There are some of those truths that are applicable to us. That's why God punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom. He said, go and study my ways as given to the ants. You are a lazy man. You are a sluggard. You are reducing yourself through laziness. So I refer you to a lower dimension of my kingdom study the ants that they do not have a king they do not have this kind of organization so when you study you come back every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm they were degraded Nebuchadnezzar was turned into what? What was he turned into? For seven years. Only his brain was left the brain of a man. But every other thing was that of a beast. And there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man. So when he became a beast, he learned that lesson. At the end of seven years, Nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to. He exalted the name of the Lord. Are we together now? They know not, neither will they understand. 82 and verse 5 of Psalms. 
they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said or i have said ye are gods and all of you not some all of you are children of the most high the next verse is a tragedy it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so the tragedy please hear me again sometimes there are times that it's just plain ignorance are we together but there are times that it is not ignorance it is the inability to sequentially arrange truth many years ago the lord did something in my life it's a personal dealing so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of um the lord prohibited me from studying my bible for one week complete one week that's why i said it's a personal dealing yours may be an attack don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing because god did not tell you yours is laxity that's why i said it's a personalized dealings satan uses words to deceive men ye are clean through the word that i've spoken to you for one week i did not read my bible not because i didn't want to i didn't understand the morale of the dealing until i was done and this was the whole object behind it the, the, the entire focus the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where i would realize that i was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth are we together yes so i was getting you know those days well now we're still passionate about god but there's something about the journey of a believer it's like marathon once they blow the whistle on your mark get set ready sometimes you are even your, your blood is as hot as whatever go and you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door so that zeal that fire greek this concordance lexicon you know just study anything once you see a strange word ah pneumatology okay this is i should add this very quickly homiletics homiletics ah so we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation spiritual but scattered and the rate of change versus the the effort was not commensurate and it was a call for concern and so god was trying to save me trouble i would have been in big trouble now let me tell you why many christians are angry and don't believe that others are using god's power entirely i'll tell you why they are aware of the effort that was put in to arrive to to take one step it's like they did a labor of five years so when they see you soaring in the spirit they say something is wrong something is wrong i started learning 10 years seven years five years ago and you just came and right now in two years you are in this level not so one of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again god plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence enough balance huh spiritual intelligence and balance these two things grace and truth when it is grace alone you are in trouble when it is truth alone you are still in trouble it is full of grace and truth so when god plants you under a ministry or under a man of god many of us the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation the real tragedy now i say that respectfully was probably the spiritual system you were planted in when you got born again because your zeal made your heart open for any information unfortunately many of us received chaffs it didn't kill you but you were not healthy either because the prodigal son ate the food of of pigs he didn't die but you can't say he was healthy that's how it is spiritually please listen very carefully 
Shepherds can destroy people. How did Moses find a wife? Read your Bible. It was shepherds that came to drive the women. Remember, the family where Moses' wife came from, they were shepherds. The women would come to feed their cattle and those shepherds would come to drive them and fetch water. And Moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people. It is important. There are shepherds that watch their flock by night. But there are shepherds that kill their flocks. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Please listen to this because tomorrow you will be the one mentoring a lot of people. Spiritual growth is a school. It's a school with an exact curriculum. That God will help you. The sequential revelation of truth matters. It does. I'm telling you this. There are many things we know about God that are wrong. There are many things we don't know about God that should be known. The dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation. Light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities. I used to think it's faith, but it's not faith. Faith is simply the credit card that you use. But what really pays for it is light. Hmm. It, from the abundance of these things, then you will know who God is. And you can worship him in spirit and in truth. There are things you can know about God that makes you unbendable, immovable. Nobody comes to sway you toe and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive the bible says it's important now before i get to my sermon this is this i can't believe that i've still not started preaching look at these people please start look at these people which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately there are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have salvation is not part of it they never got born again they were just born in a family just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are safe so they started like that they started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now from keyboard he became um, assistant music director. Are you seeing that now? From assistant music director, you became music director. From music director, you became deacon. Huh? Yes. From deacon, they opened a branch just when you were graduating. And they called you pastor, whoever you are. Now, the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown, according to God's order, there is a pattern. God is a God of patterns. He's not just a God of motion. He's a God of patterns. How you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart. Now, this is the interesting thing about God. Even when you think you have been working with God, like we arrogantly say, for 15 years, the day he reveals himself to you, he will rearrange your life back. And sometimes when he, he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire. It's in the Bible. That means you can see a lot of achievements. And the fire of his light will come. And all that will be left is your true state. That means God will say you, men say you are in level 5, you're level 15. But really, you are just at level 1. Now, you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue yes Lord yes Lord you are the king there is none other yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, you are the King, there is none other. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. So men can call you MOG, men can call you deacon, men can call you this and that. But the truth is that if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, he never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred. I hope you know at that time, Abraham was not a failure. At least he had some results. He had 200 plus servants. He had cattle. He had a number of things. And said, Abraham, don't think I'm coming to continue from there. I will start with you again. Let's start that journey. This is what brought some of you here. Some of you are already pastors, men of God, leaders. Some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission. You carried youth pastor mentality and just came and God said, no way, come and sit down. And if you are not careful, and please, every pastor here, this is an advice. Don't just see someone come because they said he came from so-so-so ministry or so-so-so parish. And in that parish, he was the music director. And you just say, okay, no problem, come and sit down and play keyboard. And the guy comes with that celebrity mindset. Because in his church, spiritual growth is not necessary. In his church, just attendance and loyalty is what is, and, and sowing of seeds here and there. But now, this requirement requires you to sit down. Many celebrities get born again. I mean, secular celebrities now. They get born again and come to church. And then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it not god you are joking not god mm -mm. not god not the god of the heavens when you come everybody starts from class one even jesus when he came the father didn't even pity jesus to say okay you are jesus i mean this is me he started right from scratch at age 12 i imagine what was in the mind of jesus when he was reading himself Thou shall love the Lord your God. And the rabbis were saying, I hope you are learning it. And he was just watching. The force that holds what he's reading. And not even Jesus was promoted like that. He had to wait. At age 12, he was learning. What do you think you are to just jump the steps? Favor does not jump steps. So, you hear that? Because our idea of shortcut must be balanced. Favor is shortcut, yes. But it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear. Favor is a system that was designed to help you. Because men do not start life in an ideal way. Please listen. If I was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday, the good old graph of life. If you are not part of school of ministry, join even if it's just because of that. If you don't change after that teaching, I don't know what will change you in this life again. The graph of life. Are we together? If I get born again 40 years, how many of you know that I'm blessed, but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time. We don't have forever on earth. Now, I got born again 40 years, and someone got born again at age 3. Who has more advantage than the other? And don't say we are all equal. You are not equal. This guy has time. Time. At age 3, born again. At age 4, filled with the Holy Ghost. At age 5, being mentored by a visionary father. When that child becomes 12, he is now you of 70 at age 12. 
Now, listen, let me show you. Listen, listen, don't just laugh. Let me show you the relevance of things like mercy, favor. These things are not just random things. God looked at the way man works on earth and said, If I don't add these other things, man will never become the fullness of God's grace. So, here and there, He interjects your work with life with these acts of His benevolence to help you. This is where things like favor are important. If you don't have favor in life, you, you will succeed. The problem is you will only succeed if your life is ideal. Nobody's life is ideal, including Jesus. They hid Jesus because somebody wanted to kill him. Until Herod died. And he said, okay, now you can go. There were things he would have been doing within that time. Mephibosheth, because a midwife... I, 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 am I alone in this place this night? Mephibosheth was a sincere person. The midwife that held him was careless. And because of her carelessness, that guy fell down and broke his leg. Now, sorry would not solve that problem. Because there are things he would never be able to do. So how does God help this man's destiny? By allowing him to live life the way it should be? So God introduces things like mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy. And looks at him God. And he knows. He looks at the way man should go. And looks at the way man goes. This guy was called to be a prophet to the nations. This is his destiny. Are we together now? According to God's predeterminate counsel. The destiny of this gentleman. Like Jeremiah. Is to be a prophet to the nations. But it so happened that the womb that would give birth to him married an unbeliever. Now listen to this. I hope you know this is not his fault. It's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled now got married to a non-Christian. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Now this guy, according to the blueprint of his life, he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at 1. But because of what he has to fight, an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here. And that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first. And listen to me. Sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university. So his destiny will have to wait till what what age do you get in medicine? 17. This guy has to wait for 17 years. Are you getting the point now? Because according to God's blueprint, that is the safest way for him to live. If he lives in a way that they, they can kill him, and God, for the sake of his destiny, will not allow him that. Now, while he's waiting for that 17 years, his brain is not closed. He's learning a lot of things he must undo. Because you cannot be in my house and not serve my God. So while he's bowing down and doing all of these things, heaven is bleeding. Because according to the blueprint, by age five, this guy should already be seeing visions. But now, the, and Satan, when he peeps there, Satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny. I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow. Please, parents, let me tell you something. And even those who have children now, don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth. It matters. Sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense, wasting his time. At the end of it, you will find out that there is no sequential growth. Please listen. I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustrations. I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. 
Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you. And the problem is not only an attack. An attack looks like the obvious reason. But I'm telling you now, there is no prophet, no pastor, no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes. No. You want holistic growth? We must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong. Back to my story. This gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from God and far from destiny. Are we together? Now he gets to the university after 17 years. 17 years has been wasted. When he gets there now, the devil will try to do all kinds of things. For instance, the devil can ensure that his first CGPA is 1.2. 1. what? Who will listen to God under that kind of condition? The pressure from life will make him say, do you know what? Let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished. Now, it doesn't mean, please, I hope you understand that I'm not being sarcastic to any... The fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you, you call it circumstances, but these are intentional orchestrations. And then this gentleman one day, that's why inviting people to the house of God, if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving, then it is evil to not invite people. This is not the issue of evangelism. This is you being an extension of God's mercy. Because the person you will be inviting, you think you are just inviting, you don't know you are acting prophecy. Imagine that this guy now is in Zaria, in this situation. Imagine what heaven will do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to Koinonia. You thought you just invited a man, but you literally shifted a destiny. Literally. Because of one encounter. Are you with me this night now? It's very important. Some of you are now seeing. Now, do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes? You have invited five, six people. But all of them don't have the same destiny. This guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Did you really invite one person? How many people did you invite? He will give you flimsy excuse excuses i've not eaten and the holy ghost will say feed him and you are like holy spirit what is all this one i don't have transport and you bring him now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then i'm not ready working for others the moment you enter except your feet does something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents You can choose to believe what I'm saying. No problem. I don't know who prayed for you before you arrived. But let me tell you sincerely. If you know that there was no salvation in your past, please hear what I'm saying seriously. And pay attention to it. Altars are wicked. They are like time. Nothing can fight them. They will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you. hallelujah i heard of a man of god that bought truck this dangote truck they kept advising him to diversify and that guy carried all his money i don't know how much that truck is but it's so expensive the moment the person bought that truck I, I, he was coming along i think kogi or so the road that was how that thing just capsized it burnt in a way burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man and the guy sat down and was almost killing himself who taught you what you know spiritually forget about the one koinonia taught you what is it resting upon because some of you this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of god now i don't mean i don't mean i love the body of christ but i have to tell you the truth there are men of God and there are churches that are wonderful, but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth. No. The context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth. 
salt is good but if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook is that a blessing no there are truths that are like salt they are sprinkled and is enough by the time you carry that truth the same size of rice and combine everything you will deal and kill somebody there are people the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual work are we together they came from a highly intellectual family and you see people just laugh and say demons the only demon you have is demon in your brain and your mind and the devil says wow this is wonderful for the child who comes from the church the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior that is a correct sermon but for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name when they gave back to you while you were a baby your head was inside water and they were speaking nonsense to your destiny and you believe you will just casually say in jesus name i'm born again no sir the same way you don't say casually money come and it comes there are systems and there are principles the same way too if you are not careful you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons did you hear what i said everything is demons and then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received so when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom you will not so all you will keep doing in your life is to pray what knowledge should bring to you you are trying to get it through prayer are we together now when you should learn when you hear sermons like sermons on destiny help us sermons on excellence the law of honor you just ignore it and say all i know is that there is a witch in this family you will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies you will celebrate and nothing will change because the issue of which was already settled but the remaining issues in fact the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity it's a blessing to have a good pastor over you it's a blessing to have a man of god that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building i will give you pastors after my heart this is a mistake we're making in ministry now we just ordain people anyhow the moment someone looks handsome charismatic can dress well you just say come you are you are pastor this and that arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people at the end of it the people don't know what they believe again it's nine o'clock let's pray we can't hear this kind of thing and just round up we are going to pray seriously first and foremost hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit find a neighbor and pray seriously prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for any man who intends to be changed to be lifted and to become great in life and destiny Halabaranda kaprakato sepeles. Pray, pray, pray.
Shele Barakato Jambrakata Embrekete Kete Baruto Soto Breke Develop My Christian experience must be fruitful. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit in my life. Barakato Sabrandega de Balash Empreketo Kashata Barata Segete Balakata Brandega de Balash Empreketo Shapros Kalakapo Shata Brandega de Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. Sheketeka baraka to pariketa, embrata leka paroda shalakata variata. My assignment, my destiny, open up. In the name of Jesus, no wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Shabarakata. Emprakato shekete leke teke 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 te Emprakato soto pako rakata paria Open up Open up Open up In the name of Jesus Open up Open up. Lekata barata shote reketaba. Open up. In the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life. Rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, O oh God. I am open. I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. 
Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment you are not supposed to be looking for money now you are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply there are people right now at according to god's blueprint the level of prophetic you should be operating in it is required for the kind of assignment but because you are still here god cannot move with you hear me hear me there are ladies according to god's blueprint you should be ready for marriage now based on the sequence of your destiny but it's right now you are getting serious with your life hear me hear me there are some of you according to the sequence of destiny it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars but the devil killed your brother from bed that means you are carrying the burden of two people. You need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else. So when you pray one hour, God will say, add it all. Because you were supposed to pray only an hour. Because there's someone else holding it with you. But he's alive and he's drinking around. And God's agenda must move forward. So you must build stamina to be able to carry it. Listen. Listen to me. Please listen. I'm speaking by the spirit. Don't think I'm just talking anyhow. Listen to me. Please listen. There are families according to the design of God. You are supposed to be three men. But the devil made sure no man come to that family. It was later on you showed up sometimes as the last born. And now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man. There are families. It's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor. But now your father did not serve the Lord. Or your father has died. God will not change his purposes. His plans can change. But his purposes remain eternal. Listen, listen, there are families, according to God's design, you should never even try to say, okay, I'm looking for two or three jobs. Because according to that design, your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance. But now the devil hijacked that destiny. And the way you are right now, if you fail, there is no more hope for your family. Because everyone that came to help the devil took them out of the way you know it i like you to pray and say lord i will not fail you and i will not fail destiny is someone praying lord i will not fail you i will not fail destiny if it depends on me then i will not fail if it depends on me if it depends on me to change the course of my family if it depends on me to enthrone Jesus over my family. If it depends on me, I will not fail. Someone pray. Pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind. Pray with the picture of your children on your mind. Pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind. Shakatata. Embrekete, teke, teke, teke. Ebra koto shoto breketele keta 
if it depends on me I will not fail it may take time but I will not fail Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen, the next prayer point we are praying. Listen, Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny geographically. Align me to destiny relationally. Align me to destiny financially. Allow me to align me to destiny spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time but you see there's something about destiny there are people when the devil wants to waste their time they will get american visa and travel and roam around america just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny look at how god brought some of you here god carried you from different places is destiny Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions you would think uh, is promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not I pray by the Spirit in this season, take me there. Take me there. I should not be at this level. In ministry, financially, maritally, spiritually, pray by your Spirit. Bring acceleration to my life. There is no more time to waste. The voice of my generation is crying. Speedy manifestation, oh God, of all that pertains to my destiny in this season. Hey, 
Sebarato Salaka Pando Plus Sakata Pacato Prakata Lakato Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. The next prayer point, I will have to teach you a little to understand. Covenants are systems of advantage. Please listen. A covenant is more than an agreement. It's a system that provides an advantage in life. Listen to me carefully. You reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have. Are we together now? Yes. Advantage. Every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the Bible, you must study it. Everybody rose based on an advantage. Joshua stood before Jericho helpless like any leader would be, except that he was standing on an advantage it was that advantage that brought the captain of the lord's army he said i am here daniel would have died in babylon except for the advantage he was standing on and based on that advantage gabriel came and said i am come to give you understanding and he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation Abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that God's people would be in captivity for 400 years. Please listen to me. This thing I'm teaching you is a deep teaching. Your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage. I repeat, the knowledge of God is not based on covenant. Your spiritual growth but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage. Are we together? And there are many systems of advantage. I hope that in the coming weeks, just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks because there are things that we need to learn. An advantage. There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. Looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, Am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, You come to me with your spheres and your bows. But I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah! I wish we could deal with this because you see a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God God's dimensions are stored in his names I came with a name are we together now and foolish Goliath instead of him to ask are you a Jew he kept quiet what do you think made Jericho to close their gate they said who are the guys coming to attack us the moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. And based on those systems of advantage, I tell you, they can fail in other things, not finances. No. They can make the most stupid financial decisions. Yet what they stand upon will bail them out. Have you seen families like that? All their children must be leaders. Must be leaders. It doesn't matter what happens. 
whether it's a village school or whatever the girl must be head girl the boy must be head boy in a class of many people eventually they will be leaders when you say the jf kennedy family what comes to your mind there are families that are a dynasty it's not just business they were passing there were platforms whether with fraternity with satan or fraternity with god but there was a system of advantage i will never forget i've always been a very brilliant person i remember i was in js one this issue changed my life i had always been the best student effortlessly the best in fact i didn't know that people used to read during exams nobody ever asked me to go and read if you were in my class just give up in terms of position you are wasting your time it's not only that i will take first the gap i will give you will make you not to come near me again and something happened when i was in secondary school the first time i was the best student the second term i think i was the best student or so but the third term the guy that took that before the parents moved to living faith listen oh they moved to living faith it didn't reach three months they did anointing service for that boy straight when he came and wrote exams when that now this is not about first or second i'm just using it to explain something when the results came out and i looked at my result i looked at the guy it, it wasn't you know i didn't know what i knew now you can imagine a small boy i said no something is wrong something has to be wrong because my best performance was this point something has to be wrong that guy was his average was just with like five marks i said no there has to be a recalculation something is wrong and then i met him i said in the spirit of sportsmanship congratulations and he laughed he told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith i said what is living faith it was later when I understood I said ah I was standing on my brain he was standing on an altar <laughs> listen sir let me do this come tell us your testimony now everybody stand and listen to this testimony go ahead um, I am a pastor I was in movie before we got transferred to Abuja because of the distance and the financial constraint we decided that my wife will not return back to school so during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam she didn't go and then we attended Koinonia uh, the miracle service uh, last month and then we the resolved that she should go back to school when she returned to school they uploaded their results lo and behold she had results and all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. Oh. What, what second semester? Semester. Because of, listen, because of financial constraint, which is justifiable. They now came down. He relocated. And then when all of that happened, he now planned because he had been i've been in touch so it's not something that we're just talking i've been in touch this is not a license for laziness no it's just showing you that there are possibilities that's why i said the prayer i want you to pray now if i don't teach this you will not understand it woe betides a man who stands alone listen bishop oyedeko listen one man of god in the south south he was about to start ministry and then he went to bishop oedeko for prayer and advice as you know they were releasing him and bishop oedeko spoke to him in yoruba i wish i'm a yoruba person he said never fight alone that's my advice for you never fight alone I show you why many people continue to fall victims in life so the plan was that they will go back 
and then let the wife now register now that god has helped them things have started changing i'm explaining the story for you they now went and said okay let's see how far as they printed results second semester result a and b parallel that's what came out as the wife's result this man is a pastor he has a congregation he's a spiritual father to many he will not come and mess up his integrity and he's, this is a father with a wife and children listen it is not to endorse laziness but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities limited only by your spiritual understanding God bless you, son. We are going to round up. But let's, we are going to pray this prayer. Systems of advantage. Abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called Or of the Chaldeans. Chaldeans were, were idol worshippers. They were necromancers. When God called him out, it still was not enough. God met him and said, I need to enter a covenant with you. If I just call you and I say, let's go to the promised land, you will still die. I have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order. Are we together? Many of you do not know that the secret to the future, you've heard me say it, is in the past. Before you move forward in life, you have to go backwards. Please hear what I'm saying. All these names that we have given this phenomena in life, they are, whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough, whether you call it spirit husband, whether you call it spirit wife, whether you call it rise and fall all those are invented names that's to tell you many people are having the same experience that's why they could receive it and understand the teaching that i did the mystery of deliverance part one to four that message has delivered people until we stand before god to see how many people were delivered When truths are taught with imbalance, it can destroy. Listen, there are things that God does for the sake of the fathers. There are things that God does for your own sake. Did you hear what I said? There are some of you now, you are in certain levels of blessings and favor. And in the name of honesty, you have nothing to do with it. Maybe your mother used to cook for pastors. Listen, no. Before you were born, your mother just said, Me, you are not a woman of God. But all I keep doing is if there is any pastor, I will make sure I cook for them. One day, she cooked for a man who was not a pastor. She cooked for a system. And he swore a blessing and said, may your children be great. Now listen, that looks like a pronouncement. It's more than a pronouncement. And now you showed up. And when Satan is supposed to destroy you, between you and the destruction, the pronouncement comes in between you. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth. The same way, Noah looked at africa and cursed africa and said a servant of servant shall you be as born again as we are that curse is still in place today now people are following from america and the rest and i don't mean to insult you but you see the level of spiritual depravity that is in america the decadence right that when you put sex on phone male of or on a form male or female it's not only male or female that is there now male female and then some others yet in the midst of it 
you expect God to be angry and stand up and say, America, your glory has been withdrawn. <sighs> Every time he wants to do that, someone's prayer stands. Every time the coming of Jesus was about to be delayed, the prayer of Anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit. Maranatha, come, come. I told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with God. She told the Lord, she said, Lord, my own father was a pastor. He died serving you. He said, please use either my brother, her younger brother now, or any of my sons to continue. Let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost. She thought it was just a casual prayer. And then I showed up innocently but something was a system of advantage there are some of you today you don't have any past you don't have any bad record it's not because you are a nice person you are one of the most loose and careless person but simply because there was an ordinance upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you let me tell you this you have to know the systems of advantage that god provided are we together the yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds it's a grace god gave that territory a grace now what i'm teaching you is truth from god's word that the yoruba people as a nation were given many graces among them was the grace for the prophetic the eyes that see not necessarily hearing but the power of sight which was an extension of intellect is a grace please listen to me let me show you mysteries Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity is a grace that was given that you can drop an evil territorially is a grace. Any poor evil man you see is a lazy man because they already have an advantage. Listen, the north, and that includes the middle belt, the grace is the grace of leadership and governance. It's a grace. This is what the northerners take advantage of. They study these things, they don't just come out for election. They know that we are standing on an advantage. These are ordinances, my brothers and my sisters. In Mount Zion, the side of the north, the city of the great king. Are we together now? Leadership. So many times... When God wants you to be a spiritual leader, listen carefully. No matter where you are, in your voyage, you must touch the knot. No matter who you are. Listen carefully. This is where Bishop Oyedeko started from. This, no matter who, he will rout you because you must drink of that grace. How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say evil people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today. 
it is those who have the eyes that see that know Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it there is a heritage that we have a territorial heritage an intellectual heritage a spiritual heritage hallelujah listen please listen we're rounding up i want you to get tonight's teaching please i like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find and tell him please please listen in fact you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you take listen this is not the kind of teaching that you hear tonight and say wow wonderful <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with there are many things i have said that you did not hear but i guarantee you that if you understand what i taught this night there is no limit to your life you can take advantage of everything around you every territory has an advantage you can tap into the advantage that comes with it your church has an advantage your soil has an advantage your family has an advantage i know your father was a herbalist and a priest but that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet there is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated. Hallelujah. This is how we grow in the kingdom. We don't just grow by will. We don't just grow by luck. Listen, let me tell you this. This night, I just chose to show you 
these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people it's not just that things are working anyhow no you see all this anointing the power of god breaking out anyhow it's not there are systems of advantage your life must learn it you must know it and you must know how to engage it every jew in israel knows he cannot fail born again or not meet any jew put any jew to be a board member of your company and you watch what starts happening no matter how foolish the decisions are the wealthiest people in america today are jews the greatest brands in the world today they are jews there is a history to the things we see there is a reason why boko haram thrives in the north they go outside the north they will fail north is the seat of governance there is an advantage in the territory they know this by divination The East is always a place associated with wisdom. The Magi, wise men came from the East. It's true. The wickedness came from the seat of governance. Herod wanting to kill Jesus. So it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the North. The seat of governance and strangely enough the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival arises hmm. that is the reason why you see the moves of God ministries like koinonia all these things are not they are not guessings they are pieces of a divine puzzle. <laughs> are we together? Many of you are looking at me dumbfounded. Let's round up by one last prayer. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life from scripture from the ministry that I am under the grace from Christ himself the chiefest of all advantages reveal to me let me know what I stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant please pray hallelujah hallelujah you know why the holy spirit decided to move this way to share this these are not things i share in a general meeting like this these are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders i don't know why god decided to allow this thing that's why i say please get it and listen to it you will think you understood what i said no your spirit man only appreciated what i said you will need to settle down because you will hear something from that message that will control your results and open you up to the next season this is how i live my life i never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage this world is too wicked you don't guess your advantage on the battlefront it's too risky Tomorrow I'm on my way to Lagos again. I came back from Kogi State yesterday. 
there is an advantage I stand upon that gives me security over death. My life is a very risky life. If you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule, and all you say is, I know God will protect us, one day you will land in trouble. I am a giver as a person. It's both an office, a hobby, a desire, and a responsibility. And I know that the way I give is not recommended for an average person. I'm telling you this. You give that way, you will have problems with your wife, your husband, your children. That means there must be an advantage. This is more than financial intelligence. There must be a system provided that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered. My work should do. If you do what I do for two weeks, you will have a health challenge. Sincerely, I'm telling you this. I've been out of this town since Saturday. Only returned yesterday. Had to rush, come for school of ministry. And all today, I've been busy doing a lot of things. I'm here now this night. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two, three hours. Heading back home. Barely have time to sleep. Tomorrow, I'm heading to Lagos. Straight into the morning session of a meeting. And yet, Tuesday is my birthday you live like that something will happen to you if i've not collapsed it's not just because i'm wise there is something you must stand on there must have been something god told you or god told someone you are under or god connected you to there has to be something there are ministries who don't understand this they are anointed but they pay every bill by themselves they never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage there are some of you you have never been helped by anybody you have not lacked but you don't know what it means to be assisted our lives are full of systems of advantage there was something on Jesus that made Simon of Cyrene to be close by. There was something in Jesus that made Joseph of Arimathea to be willing to bury him in the virgin tomb. Look at me, please. I'm rounding up. I know I'm taking your time. We're rounding up now. Any earthly advantage in your life that seems to have gone, there is a spiritual replacement for it. Listen, let me comfort you. That means whatever your father should be. Please, I'm not getting you emotional. If your father here, if you've lost your father, or you've lost your mother, or you've lost any sibling, or you've lost a destiny helper, I'm bringing you a word of hope. That every physical thing that they should do, there is a remedy in the spirit. If it does not happen to you, it is because you do not know this dimension of God. That means you are saying, I'm an orphan apostle and the only child. No father, no mother. There is something you can tap into the realm of the spirit that can be almost equal, aside from the bodily connection of a father, a mother. Are we together now? There are some of you who lost your physical parents and God carried you and came and planted you in Koinonia here so that you can have the opportunity of receiving what is as real as, I, as fatherhood. That means it is your responsibility to go back to God and say, Lord, because of my faith, I left my loved ones. Now I am in Zaria all by myself. I don't have an earthly father. I don't have an earthly mother or I have a father, mother. Some of you here, please don't feel bad. I am rounding up, but I'm speaking by the spirit. Some of you here are single moms. You have your children, something happened. Maybe your husband died or ran away. Whatever the story is, it doesn't matter. And humanly speaking, you are supposed to be disadvantaged. But the Bible says, for we know. They don't know. 
but we know that the kingdom can construct an advantage for you there are systems of advantage apostle i graduated with a third class or i never even had the opportunity to go to school in the first place and the truth is at my age knowledge is not a waste but sincerely at my age the responsibilities around my life may not allow me the privilege of a young person going to go to school again there is a system of advantage that you can tap into that will lift you and keep you where your contemporaries are as though you did not have any disadvantage this is the excellency of working with god listen one of the most treasured gifts that you must covet in your life is the ability to hear god clearly the times we live in now guess what will punish you again and again he said the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want here's how i quote it if the lord is my shepherd then i shall not want when you are many of us hear demons clearly you hear spirits clearly you hear voices nonsense voices clearly you don't need to pray to hear them but do you know that many of us now even our dreams have been hijacked and manipulated you don't even know whether it's god speaking now or not they come as an appearance of light but the message is not consistent with the integrity of god so you don't even know what to believe again dreams are prophetic avenues for the speakings of god to reach the saints but they can be hijacked and manipulated by the powers that be a lady can be manipulated to reject her husband a gentleman can be manipulated to reject his wife a person can be manipulated to reject his voice he is job there are many people they got jobs a spirit told them leave they thought it was god and they left it shadow katos yambra katos asi arhatash i'm seeing the lord is showing me a vision be sensitive something will happen here now and i'm seeing people in the realm of the spirit but i'm not seeing ears imagine like a man no ears this is what i'm seeing now i understand by this vision what the bible says he that hath an ear physically we are supposed to have ears but right now in the name of jesus this is not for everybody hold on I'm praying right now there is a grace that will open the hearing of people I stretch my hands Lord where are they the men and women that need to hear you in this season for ministry to move forward I stretch my hands representing the hands of God and I command the hearing ears be open now Papa Lucatosiata Please help them be open now. Be open now. For business, be open now. For ministry, be open now. For your career, be open now. Hallelujah. And Isaac sowed in that land. He sowed in a specific, there is a geography to increase. It doesn't just happen everywhere there are people today if the devil wants to destroy them he will give them visa to uk they will think his breakthrough not every open door is anointed there are times the devil destroys you by opening doors it's not always closed doors there are open doors that, that are open doors towards doom he said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death mm thou shalt show me the path of life he said for it is in your light that we see light we're going to cry for divine direction many destinies are tied down now because of divine direction or lack of it lord what is the next phase of my life you can't remain like this and just sit down what is the next season what is your blueprint lift your voice and pray show me oh god I buy into the mind of the spirit. What is your communication for my ministry, for my life in this season? I don't want to be found where you were. I want to be found where you are. Pray. He that 
have an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying, not what he said. What he's saying, what he's saying, what he's saying. He said the Spirit speaketh expressly, not the Spirit spoke. The Spirit speaketh expressly. Direction, O God. Listen, listen. Let me talk to us a little. Especially, I know that a generation of young people were very proud. We just believe that just because we went to school, we can determine the course of our lives with intelligence. No. Destiny is not just academics and education. You must cry part time per second for revelation. This ministry, by the grace of God, we are where we are because not just because of the ability to hear God but the ability to stay until he says move tiredness can tell you to move weariness can tell you to move he said if your presence goeth not with us don't send us from here oh God we are not going do you know it is costly to go without God it's cheaper the pain of your waiting is cheaper than the pain of knowing that you are where God is not. There are men of God that started well, but people encourage you and say, this is how they do it in ministry. When you get to this level, this is the next step. And you foolishly took a step. A step that ate away your destiny and your progress and your blessing. Hallelujah. It matters that we understand times and seasons and that we can wait until God says move. I remember after our second crusade in this ministry, the next year, we were discussing and they said, where are we going? I went to the Lord and the Lord said, you are not going anywhere. And I said, okay, we are not going anywhere. Ah, but I thought we'd do it every year. <clears throat> Be careful, the ritual of religion can destroy you. God used to do th this way. It doesn't mean he has to do it the same way the most important thing is let it be him doing it treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful mm. redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come. Nothing in this world is Jesus, you're the calm that won't run dry. We live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed. God is a God of speed. I don't know why I'm preaching this now. This is part of the miracle service. God is the God of speed, but God is not the God of rush. There is a difference between speed and rush. Many of us, the spirit of God is speaking to someone here. You need to calm down. The way you are running with your life, you are going to land in trouble. The way you are running with ministry, you will land in trouble. The way you are approaching marriage, the way you are approaching destiny, you will land in trouble. Culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch. My soul, wait thou upon the Lord. God is a God of speed. But until he speaks, you are on your own. It's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving. Running but not moving. And here comes a man, as weak as he is, but he can walk at the pace of God. And more can be achieved in one month with God than 10 years alone. Have you not learned the excellency of walking with God? He said, for with God, all things without God outside of God there are things that are not possible 
apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we're rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible but let me die waiting my soul waits down upon the lord it's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait gone are the days that people will say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting the bible says except the lord builds a house listen very carefully it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city man of god listen businessman he says he says the watchman watched but in vain and my bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow only to eat the bread of sorrow i'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep There are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want to rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way paul a man approved of god jesus a man approved of god Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We're still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. Now, there are systems. There is a way that he works. And one of the ways that he works is to direct men. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It matters. God is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are, you are hurrying up too much. You think it's breakthrough. You are running. You will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle. For someone after this service, you need to go and calm down with your life and say, I've been running since 2005. What have I done with my life? Absolutely nothing. Oh, come Lord Jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of God your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become Beulah and Hephzibah, the delight of the nations, the excellency of waiting. The hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. It's easy to rush. It's easy to do a lot of things. You will make more mistakes in your life rushing. There is power in waiting. Are we together? There is power in waiting. We're going to pray for the sick now. There's a lot to do tonight. But listen very carefully. If this message is for you, then I want you to receive it from the depth of your heart. You know, when we come like this, there are various things that the Lord is doing to several people. Not everyone is sick. Not everyone is oppressed. But a word can come and God says, be careful. There are people about to relocate now to regions. They have not sought God. They just assumed. 
let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is no place on earth called greener pastures greener pastures is a spiritual location is where the voice of god for you is god is already helping someone how many nigerians smuggled their way through the desert trying to get to labs because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern appreciate and reward value that's all they have a greater propensity to discern to appreciate and to reward value you can be where you are if you are truly directed by god and he will come to you and bless you are we together now how many of you are trusting the lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we're going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer i want to settle down and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we're all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are in overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you're here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesize to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you i notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the lord is showing me something about this woman you don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it your husband got another wife Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? and sisters let me tell you something i'm not trying to embarrass this precious lady i don't know you i'm just seeing you for the first time i'm not a woman so i can't pretend to say i know what is happening here but for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and i'm asking it boldly do you believe that god can give you new fallopian tubes Where are you coming from? Madam, let me tell you, there is a God that sits in heaven. God is not a herbalist. He's a miracle worker. Put your hand on your stomach. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's all right. I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes. 
the God that doeth wonders. Brand new fallopian tubes. I say it again. Brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her. Social help. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing me somebody. It's just so long. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm saying that someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light. A very strong anointing. Bring the person. The Lord is rolling away the reproach in your life. And the Lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Therefore in the name of Jesus I declare to you. Not only will you or your brother be healed, I decree and declare salvation comes to your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sing for us that song, Creator of the Universe. Creator of the Universe.
at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing fibroid. Is that true? How long? Seven years. Fibroid. Confirmed in the hospital. That devil is going to leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I've not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God. Oh, my God. 
and say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over the next half of this year. Hear the word of the Lord. Become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Seasons of signs and wonders. Seasons of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please let's be serious. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of the anointing. Required. For my next level of exploits. I receive it tonight in Jesus name. Open your mouth and please pray. lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen that's the next prayer point we prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be returned one more time in everything Restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and even the palmer worm has taken. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left. I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
of Jesus Christ. Say it again in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over my loved ones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is your season of rising. Lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones. Please believe what you are saying. Prophesy. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. This is your season of rising. A new level, a new dimension in the spirit. says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declares thou that ye might just be justified pray don't entertain unbelief I cause poverty. I cause failure. Pray. Jesus cause the victory. Jesus, I decree and declare that my help comes from above. I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord. And in this season, I prophesy to my destiny, Ebenezer, receive the help of God. Lift your voice and pray. Come for help.
listen let me tell you this we are still praying many of us here all you need is the ministry of helpers are we together now the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills do you know why he spoke about the hills because god used the strategy of the hill to protect the people every time there was war he would lead them up the hill and if they got there there would always be victory remember elijah when it, when there was time for any contest he would say go up the hill mount camel mount zion mount this and that and so he said i will lift up my eyes to the hills but he said no 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 where comments my help he said my help the, the hill is only a strategy the hill is not my source and then he says my help cometh that means just like faith help to cometh faith cometh help cometh your help can come from other places by divination and witchcraft a man can attract a system of attention but he will pay for it listen Ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of God that can help a man blessed is a man that finds help from God many people are suffering because there is no help life can be cheap when there is help believe me when I tell you this how much is the rent that the God of heaven cannot pay it how much is it what is the job issue with a single signature a man's life can change but I told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need it takes a grace and anointing to compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default I like you to cry father in this season I'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny help us please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray name of Jesus we are still praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all god can step in and you have value you are packaged your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at butchery my god arise for me as a helper Shaka barakatos, shaka taka 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 ta, rakata barakatos, shake the tempe ke te ke te ke lebe ke ta ta, shama sonda barakatos ya taka ta. Help for my family, O God. We cry for your help. Pray for your business. Arise, O God, as a helper. When the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion. Then we were like them that dream, and then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for us. He said the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying over the issue of help. Listen, you are going to pray for your loved ones. I know this about Africa. If you rise alone, you will not remain there. <clears throat> In Africa, as you rise, you pray for your loved ones to rise too. If you are the only successful person out of 15 people, they will stretch you and drain you. If Joseph and his brothers were also equally successful they will not persecute him but he was one out of many i saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bowing to one person and the brother said no way and they walked him out my bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household sometimes it's not binding and casting lord show them mercy too so that as i'm rejoicing they will rejoice and leave me in peace are you ready to pray say in the name of jesus i provoke divine help over my loved ones i prophesy to them that in this season receive the help of the lord lift your voice and pray for your loved ones financial help spiritual help Career help. Saza sata chova shana makata. Shana makata sana makata kala koto siyata. Help, O God. Shaba katos. Shabros kete bara kato shana makata. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37 and he took me in the spirit of the Lord and he took me to a valley and the Bible says that valley was full of bones and it says the bones were very dry bones don't dry up in one day it means they have been there for a long time we want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go you were born and you met that problem you have become an adult you have met that no 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 it must go that it has stayed long does not mean it's valid say in the name of jesus every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job hear the word of the lord 
Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh ministry, hear the word of the Lord. Oh business, hear the word of the Lord. Oh destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. And he said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones. And say, O bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of that, he said, And as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was a sound. And then a shaking. Notice that the bones began to look for themselves. Meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves. Kabbalah Kota Shikata. And then the bones were there, but there was no life. He says, Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon this slain. And the wind came and breathed upon the bones, and there arose an exceeding great army. Listen, God is able, God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight. He said, Have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, we know that birth is nine months. But something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can burn overnight with no root. I like you to say, Lord, let the supernatural work in my life in this season. Business at a supernatural rate. Ministry at a supernatural rate. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. As soon as Zion travails, pray. Hallelujah. The apostle said, I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Your breakthrough desired to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Your helpers desired to come to you. Have you seen a situation, Ejimi, where someone is about to bless you but before you reach your helper your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you he said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please i'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray we are not here to waste time Brothers and sisters, this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom. Are we together? It says to not be ignorant of the devices, the methodologies from the word stratomai, the methodology of Satan. There are methods. He said, do not let your good be evil spoken of. Have you seen that that's a method? That I call you and Satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm. I just called you to say how are you and he says so you are mocking me it's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him do you think they just they don't, please carry your healing rubbish and go how many men of God were sent by God to families to help them but the devil changed their perception over that grace say no 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 anything pastor they are all riffraffs they are beggars they are liars they are hungry people they just want my money it's a strategy someone wants to teach you something and help you say no this this guy don't no 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 I desired once again to come to you but Satan hindered us how many people today would have been helped by God are we together now you heard that they are applying jobs 
but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to God to help us know what is of God and what is not of God because many times they look the same is the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you join anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is god are we together i remember a few years ago i went to a house to pray for them i was invited and i got to the house i usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them and i went to the house and uh, um i just saw the man the, the owner of the house the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw they didn't have up to two months to live And I sat down, I was talking with the family and the man was just looking, you know, you know, all this, do, do and leave my house. Until by the mercies of God, God began to speak to him. At the end of it, it was him that escorted me out. He said, ah, ah, you are, you are, you know, my friend, they collected my, I said, look at this man would have missed this miracle. Brothers and sisters, some of our loved ones, you know what I'm saying, are like that. Their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years. They organized a program near your house. And they say, no, 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 no. Once it is not you, it is not God. It's an error. What of business opportunities? Just because people have been scammed here, just because something came out and something happened, they be anything business, God forbid. Don't even mention anything. Oh, sorry, dear. Sir. No, 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 no. Don't talk to me. And then you remain poor and broke and say, God, what is wrong? He told Joshua, be strong and of good courage in life it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes 28 of genesis god came to jacob and jacob out of his fear and cynicism was not ready for that visitation the next verses would lead him to the house of laban where he learned by his pain by chapter 32 he was ready the bible says when god came again he held him he said whether you are not god i will hold you it's in your holding i will find out i won't let you go till you bless me he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie and blessed him and the bible says then the sun arose and he called the name of the place peniel for he had met with god face to face i have seen god face to face and my life arose and the bible says then the sun arose because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together i want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny help us Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen, a helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. 
some men came to david in a cave called adulam and they vowed that we must make you king you are seeing a man who is already weak no result ah when your helpers come to you it will look like a charm there will be no reason for them to remain they will call you have you gotten the job sir no sir ah after okay i'm going to abuja for you and you start saying i hope there's no string attached no 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 i only saw myself helping you in a dream are we together every destiny helper has those in need please hear me graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved god changes the rules as if it's unfair to you Hapa, there is such a dimension the helper of israel when you labor and labor and labor and labor you'll be lying to say you are giving god glory there are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality the way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when god places a demand greed has an explanation when you when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship you can't give but if it's freely you received if freely you will give are we together your destiny is one helper away by the privilege of god's grace i've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people and overnight they got jobs without interview just because i happen to know someone in a position of influence and i say sir please there is someone can you help me i say apostle if it's you that's it the same way someone too has spoken it's the help of god we rise by his help your business will open up by his help everything you have is needed on earth but it takes god to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace it is the help of god that brought us here brothers and sisters the help of god there are pastors that need the help of god you can blow balloon and put it around you can do everything and find out that the people come and say it's cold don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you yet somebody called by god to help you will stand in the rain and say i'm sent and i'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help please hear what i'm telling you do you know if you do things alone and by yourself you are not blessed even if you succeed in doing it help help that god arises for a man and say young men establish within 10 years but i have chosen promise that in one month i will do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you would not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it challenging and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of god or not i told him i said no that that is a foolish that is a foolish concern are you seeing you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list you are now seeking whether it's the will of god going behind what is there to ask whether it's the will of god or not listen i know that it looks like it's just a joke but it's a serious issue how many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help no help ask the medical doctors they will tell you you buy a car alone you look for food alone you walk alone you seek counsel by yourself you advise yourself no helper you see people moving like cane all around nobody to help nobody to advise you their pastor pastor bolaji do you know sometimes pastor bolaji would call me 
and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god are being spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70 percent of the invitations where i go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of god i know see all these people from the north no 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 i know this one who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take mordecai uh, mordecai mordecai is outside but mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it will take god using someone inside joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to send them my way i want i i cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of god my help cometh from the lord satire there were many widows in zarafat they all needed help but to none was elijah sent except a widow in zarafat how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but god chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so I can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life. I should not serve God and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food. He says, since I was young, now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. You know, many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom, they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life, it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual. I can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly. Are we together? The ladies that go into prostitution, do they go into prostitution with poor men? The young men that join occults, all these cult groups, vibrant young people, and the next thing you see, they are in a devilish cult somewhere. It's easy for us to criticize them, but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few 
there are many of you with business ideas there are many of you with ministries there are many of you desperately waiting for a job and men are beginning to say where is your god you are no longer young you have been praying and fasting and doing all of this if you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with god we will stop you from coming for koinonia or we will stop you from doing this and god wants to arise and prove himself mighty why won't you pray well when you eat well why won't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i have the privilege by the mercies of god to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and i see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to egypt and stayed until they became slaves when they began to say it's time for our exodus pharaoh looked at them and said uh-huh you are beginning to find some level of convenience don't give them straw it's because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the lord leave them to find straw by themselves and they say moses don't go to pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors turn trouser turn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father says, if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he said but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the hearts to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around 
and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like Naaman you may be the captain of a great army the Bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life I'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present Christ well let's cry together and say God you have done well in this area and I thank you but Lord I cry that in this area may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the Lord in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray this is a representation of our pain it's a representation of our needs just cry to the Lord my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues 
Lord, there are issues here that only God can solve. Some of the issues represented here are life and death issues. We will search for you and we will find you. We will find you with all our hearts. We will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all my heart Lord I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart and I will lift my voice to you in worship I will worship You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. speak over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before God be turned now into supernatural testimonies may God turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ just give me two three minutes and we're done I want to speak over your life now when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold above all names I decree and declare over your life let a new dimension of testimonies come upon you in like a mighty rushing wind in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare everything that represents shame and reproach in your life I cry to the God of heaven to roll it away like smoke before the wind in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every man of God represented here fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ every issue of concern in your career in your business and in your life I send the word of God like a messenger to reproduce the garden of Eden over your issue in the name of Jesus Christ when a man's ways pleases the Lord he make it even his enemy to be at peace with him I declare whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise I command peace to happen between you Master, we have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I want to prophesy to you. 
where you failed before go back again with an anointing go back with the grace that makes men succeed in the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord visited Sarah and she called the name of her son Isaac he said all those who hear about this will laugh with me I introduce you to a new season of laughter 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 turn again our captivities like the streams of the naked I pray for you it will be like a dream of the night the way God will turn your life around anyone here under the plague of death any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy i decree oh death where is thy sting and oh grave where is thy victory i command death to pass from over you in the name of jesus he said let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield every ground can yield i command your ground to produce for you Amen. daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards he said but there is a god that revealed secrets i pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my God open your eyes to see it and the Bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land it's called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and Isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ it says thou causest men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place i decree and declare help even in the area of finances may it arise for you i say it again help even in the area of finances may it arise for you finally i pray for every family represented here and that includes those connecting with us online it doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the lord has made a, declare, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore i decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders i say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Jesus hallelujah Paradventure, adventure you are here in this place tonight everyone please listen please no moving around let's honor the name of the Lord you are here you have seen what the Lord has done you've heard me teach and the Holy Spirit began to convict you to tell you that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously I want to give you that opportunity right now there are people here saying apostle I've heard about God I've been around the things of God I've been around church I have a Christian name my father may even be a man of God my mother is an intercessor but I I declare my need for God tonight and then there are others here who are saying apostle I have given my life to Christ but at one point or the other I just found my life going haywire 
and i'm saying i need jesus if you belong to any of these categories i'd like you to make a bold step overflow one overflow two the main auditorium you can walk and come out here and then overflow three you can go in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the holy spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first god bless you Koinonia, are you appreciating them in the name of jesus christ there has to be someone making a decision for jesus god bless you god bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war god bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front god bless you keep coming we have one minute for you if you're coming from outside please double up your steps very quickly very quickly say call for total surrender lord you gave me your life i'm giving you mine right now are there people still coming make your way very quickly apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not i've been around the things of god but i'm not exactly sure join them join them quickly when the titanic sank there were only two names those who were lost and those who were saved no in-betweens make your way quickly hallelujah i salute every one of you if you are joining them please join them very quickly overflow three you can move to the front of your projector those online giving their hearts to jesus just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of jesus now i want you to lift your right hand sincerely you're not reciting a poem you are speaking to the lord and he's here listening to you say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification tonight i hand over my life to you and i receive your life in return i declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of satan is broken over my life i declare that i'm a child of god i am saved the grace to walk in victory to walk in liberty is mine now in jesus name keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for we thank you for bringing these ones out no man can come to the father except you draw them lord jesus i pray that the grace that keeps men in this kingdom let it be supplied your people right now in the name of jesus christ i declare over your life and i decree that you are going forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ every challenge you came here with as a result of this new life let new victories come for you in jesus name i pray a big congratulations to you thank you so much now i want you to follow someone waving his hands there's a gentleman waving his hands there can i see who is waving his hands now please very quickly i'd like you to follow him all of you in concert just follow the gentleman there'll be a group of people to just meet with you very quickly and very briefly let's honor them hallelujah In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin